This is Shokura Zohe Kyoku aka Chocomint and welcome back to our last play of Eorza Major, an Alchemia story. In the last episode, we have successfully protected our town with everyone else and this will be the continue of it. Where we'll foresee the epilogue of the efforts of our journey. And maybe some cute looking thing between Yorza and Uribel. So, let's continue. Huh. It's only been three months when this living little town gets so crowded. I suppose I should have asked where they lived first. You there, boy. Huh? My name's that boy, old lady. Then I shan't call you that if you don't call me old lady. Where is the carpenter in the doctor's house? Don't know. We don't got a house like that. You dumbo. She means the teachers were skipping out on. Oh. Well, that. Let's make a deal. If you direct me to the home where I find them, I shall tell them you two were here. I think that teacher will get you some fruit when Audrey gets them. Thank you. Do stay safe on your way back. The boisterous sounds of children vanished into the distance. I came up to Uribel. Brushing sawdust off my hands. Reading lessons go well? Yes, they are very bright young minds. They surprise me each time with insight. I do not know if I am teaching them, or they are teaching me how differently humans can think. It is always both. I am glad you are enjoying the work. Oh, yes. And your crafting lessons. How have your bubbles been? Over eager, not so careful, but could be worse. I hadn't thought I'll ever have bubble, bubbles to teach. My parents had taught me as much as they could. I wanted to honor their memory and do the same. But as I grown older, alone. I resigned myself to never being able to pass on those skills to any child on my own. These were not my children, Uribel and I would not be able to have any, but I was content with that. Because we were together, and any child in need in Silvervale now could come to us to learn or be helped. I'll gain so many unexpected bubbles in the last two months. And seeing Uribel's joy at them was wonderful. Bubbles. Eorza, you are staring at me. Sorry, just thinking. I couldn't help but reach out to stroke Uribel's hair, and his blush different, deepened, as did his smile. Ah, oh, you two are so cute. Oh man. Being able to simply touch him like this was also wonderful. Been two months since we started watching kids. Almost three since that vein was discovered. Yes, that um, really has passed so quickly. I could not have imagined it. I wonder if... I you too! Ah. Speak of the... Olaine? Please try a biscuit. Yersa has been a master hand at them. I'll get a tea. I'm just learning. You have made much better ones. Well, now I just feel like I'm interrupting. Been warm in here too. Wonder if it's the herd or you two lovebirds. 
Woo! Yes, it's burning hot in there. Hmm. It's near the winter. Cannot be that. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad. Looks like you made yourself something very pretty special here. Teaching the village kids how to read and build, watching the little ones. This is the nicest school I've been in, I'll tell you that. It's thanks to you, actually. Um, oh, shush. No, I just did the introductions for you two. Don't write yourself up. I meant what happened with this village and the mines. Olaine had left soon after we broke up the diamond, so she missed her clean up for her traps, and the discovery of a massive vein of silver unearthed by a blast. Former miners and young men had soon flooded back to Silver Vale, summoned by letters from their families or the allure of silver. Since everyone was suddenly busy trying to manage the mines or new poultry opportunities, Uribel and I had offered to help watch the village children. Eventually, we decided to turn in, it into an official of sort school. That's so. Huh. I didn't realize I could have climbed myself out as a Maya scavenger. If you ever tire of the wandering life, there are many here you might who might have work. Huh. The cheek. Oh, that's right. I did wonder I'm back here to tell you about something. I just still heard the news too. About Rehom. That's right. Olin had promised to come back and tell us. We had heard some of it in gossip from travelers and merchants. The mayor ousted stricter laws, fines to be paid. But how exactly did I hope that happened. Uribe returned, set in three cups of steaming tea before all of us. The fragrance of Jemomai grows as Olin sat back, recollecting. Wow, simply put, Rihon's mayor was an imbecile and a coward who was too greedy for his own good. Perfect combination for travel. The diamond bait file you had, I took it back to read home and started asking some questions. Turns out it was a legitimate order for diamond bites from the read home guard. But not all of the vials made it to the guards. A few ended up with the mayor, and they did ended up with some bandits. And then those bandits started leaving diamond baited rotten meat all over under his orders. Those men we met, they were. They had been hired by the mayor of Rehom. Yep, sounds like the man wanted to fill up his own coffers. And he figured extracting some more tax from the nearby villages, Brookhaven, and that other one was the best way to do it. But why would Satan die more on them? He wanted them to beg Rehom for assistance, and then Rehom would demand tax money in return. That's what he thought, but he was an imbecile. Imbecile, imbecile, imbecile. Those villages were more than strong enough to handle their own diamond problems. They even started wondering about why Rehom was unscarred. So he had to set Diamond on his own damn towel to take the suspicion off. The Diamond that I fought at read home, and the girls opened in Minyar, so they hadn't been involved after all. Anyway, long story short, his plan wasn't working, so he decided to go after Silver Bell as an example. That's why that entire trail of bait happened. And took a whole bag of diamonds to this village. <sighs> I suppose I understand. We were weak and poor. Starting us wouldn't have any meaning. But if an entire village were raised by diamond, 
the rest would be scared enough to go along and beg for help. That is horrible. He felt we're still here, and he's done. The tea was a little bitter and very refreshing. Uribel had learned how to brew it perfectly. Sipping it seemed to shake off a little of the grimness that had seeped into our conversation, and looking at Uribel's smile did the rest. I reached over and took his hand. Though, there's some one other strange thing I heard. Oh. It sounds like folk from the capital, Lavin, also came to Rihom. Men from the military and from the university, university, as I heard. Rumor was they helped discover the mayor's bot. But Lavin is full of green people. It cares nothing for small towns like ours. Why would they come now? Ah, it's me. Probably someone high and mighty got spooked all by all the diamond, or maybe it's you, Olin. Maybe you're someone really higher up from the, um, from the city, the rain city, maybe. Olin was looking shifty again. Ah, <sighs> fine. Ah, uh, that reminds me. I should learn more about this land as well. Levin is another human city. Yep, the capital city of Atlas and its biggest. Grand too. More people in a single street than you've ever seen here. Shame you two are so busy. I'll take you to see the sights if I could. Maybe one Sunday, eh? That would be wonderful. That sounds amazing. You have been there. Yep, I'm on my way back now, actually. So unfortunately, I can't stay for too long. Best to get on the road again before it's too late. Already? Sure, you can stay at least one night. We could show you the size of Silverville. You are, after all, our benefactor. It would only be fitting. Oh, go on now. How about this? You too wet yet? Ooh. What? Well, we're already. She means married. In human terms, sworn as a bear before, not the other things. Wait, wait. What do you mean? What the other things? Um, I mean, uh, good for you too, but um, that flush though. <laughs> I may or may not understand what that means. <laughs> the other things. Ah, uh, no, not yet. We have been busy. <laughs> then if you invite me to the nuptials, I'll stay and see all the sights you want. Deal? Ah,、oh, of course. We should have remembered earlier. I saw my chance. Where should we send the invitations? We don't have a date yet, so we'll need to know where to send a letter to you once we do. So a name, an address, or even a city. Wandering alchemist is not enough. I almost expected Olaine to wave things off again, but this time she only grinned, took out a piece of graphite and some paper, and began to write. She passed it to me shortly, and I shared it with Uribel. Lavin, that is the capital you mentioned. For I'll come your way, and tell her. Ah.、Uh. Well then, if that's all settled, and I'll be really should be on my way. Thank you for the tea, Irabel. And here, sugar, you have done well. But the biscuits do. Waving, Olin disappeared down the hill with a full bag of biscuits that Uribel had thoughtfully prepared. We went back and watched her go together, and with Uribel leaning against my shoulder, I wondered. The guidebook of Ishim Olin had just happened to have, 
and the summoning show done so easily. Why on earth has someone like that wanted to help us? And how exactly had I met Uribel in the first place? I wanted to summon an Earth Isham that had seemed like nearly a lifetime ago, and a very different me. But now, Iersa, you must not look so worried. I'm sure we will see her again. It is not that. You're right. We will. But I wondered something else. When we met, when Olaim helped us meet, you told me you heard my voice. It was a blessing that I did not deserve, but I was foolish and stubborn then, so I did not understand. How did you find me? Oh, Yersa, you were not in of the sort. Your voice was honest and determined. You wished to stand on your own, but I believe what I heard was you also wished for another to stand at your side. Uh, it was that obvious. Back then, I had tried to squash all my hopes of being loved and throw myself solely into working for the village. It was a little humbling to realize I had felt so utterly. It was no bad thing. Your wish was so clear that it was unmistakable. Because that is what I have also always wanted. I have lived for millennia among my people, solitary in a sea of jointed minds, feeling alone and not understanding why. Your voice. Gave me solid ground to stand up on. Your desire and your soul guided me to you, and I have been so happy ever since. To understand at last what it means to stand by another and love them. Ah. <sighs> Woo. I wonder how many cows I will have uh, for my screaming at these uh, CGs. Looking nice, looking cute. Oh, I didn't notice that uh, yours is a bit taller. Hmm. Okay. Very cute. That's my line, Arabelle. I love you. I'm glad you heard me. Oh, yours. Thank you for this life, and I hope that that way we share. I love you as well. And we went back to our home together. Oh, nice. Oh, they also did the background too. That should be the credit. Okay. I really like the um, um the music for this game. Oh, okay. Not yet done. Lin, hearty congratulations on your second birthday. This is both your annual letter and an apology for missing the party because of my trip. I've enclosed a wooden souvenir that you might like. It's from a town called Silver Bell, made by a fine craftswoman and her Asian husband, who I was overjoyed to see wed at last. Weddings are always joyful occasions, but when two people have faced such challenges, it is all the sweeter to know that they could overcome them. Oh, this is, should be Olaine's letter. And it gives me hope that Ishim will ultimately find a place in this world, especially in the hearts of those who care for them. When you're older, I'd like to take you traveling with me. Like this trip of mine, there are so many different maps and stories to see. Out in the world beyond the walls of Lavin. Learning about them and understanding them will help you become a good man. An alchemist who truly makes the world a better place for humans and Aishim alike. I also hope by the time you're old enough to read this, 
You have forgiven Amayin for not coming to your party one year. Your mother might not help, though. With sincere love, Amayin. Intolerant. Ooh. Okay. The story of humans and Isham continues in Heart Surgical Alchemy. A new, a, a, a new novel? Nice! So, this person should be the next protagonist? She looks pretty cool, actually. I really like her vibe. Maybe some, uh, somewhat smart? Maybe, um. Yeah! She looks really nice. Great! Both, uh, st still look. She looks like someone strong too, in a sense of personality. Not, not sure about the strain though. She looks more of um, working out chemically instead. Ooh! So that is the end of our let's play for your and major an alchemy story. I might not remember correctly, but um, the judging for the reaction of Irsa at the end about the name of uh, Olin, who was actually in Talarian or Ma some something. Um, is it the one who wrote the instruction? Um, after Ishim or oh yeah actually yeah she actually the one who wrote the instructions for Ishim if I remember correctly wow so um they could be considered a kind of like emotion for the um, <laughs> for the book too <laughs> and also for the Ishim I wonder uh, how many people have she done this for? Uh, provide the connection between human and Ishim, and perhaps they become lovers or what it is really. Oh, that's right. That's a really nice purpose, actually. Maybe in the next story, uh, we will see her again, along with a new protagonist who will have their own Ishim. So, um, for the story of Year Some Nature, an Alchemia story, I thought it was a really nice um, story to read. Really um, soft, heartwarming, wholesome. I do love the pace, it's really gradual. The um, first meeting, getting to know each other, and then conflict, maybe conflict. The, um, understand each other based on um, the difference in opinion or in the lifestyle they share between Aishim and human where they their words are different from each other and learn to understand and accept each other and then go to the romance at the almost at the end and the big conflict and a happy ending which I really like is the, the flow is easy to follow and i do love the personality of the protagonist uh Uribeo is very gentle and very kind while uh, Irsa is strong strong will and yet also very very gentle i love that both of our protagonists are very major them mature themselves like Rational, logical. They don't. I think they did stream a little, but it's not like throwing a big tantrum like Jiren or something, or like um, doing something reckless. Well, maybe maybe they did, but it's um, it's not too serious in a sense, I guess. So, um, yeah, they work it out very adult in adult way through talking to understand each other willing to be able to apologize for for their faults 
and reconcile. So I, I really like um, the protagonist, and I also like the people around them too. Everyone in the town was very kind. Um, the um, the bond between the people in the town was lovely, and it's kind of funny uh, uh, with the chief with Olin. <laughs> Olin is a um, is also an interesting person too. And I hope I have a feeling that we will meet her again in another story of Alchemia story. The next is the art of the game, Iersa Major. It has a certain style to it, like it's, uh, their style is very distinct. You cannot uh, miss, you cannot, um, it, it leaves an impression. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, um, not every game has this art style like this. And I think they did their background sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think in the credit they did also did the background, which is, which looks really nice too. Wow, wowie. And there's a two main artists for the background, I believe. Let me check the credit again. Yes, two people for the background and other graphics. Um, uh, with the uh, other people, UI with Nashville. I oh the UI is really good too. Like it fits their team. The art style, the UI, their uh, settings. Yeah, everything fits. That's, there's not much I can say about it other than it fits. Everything uh, goes well together in art style. Um, next is the uh, last but not least is the uh, music. I, to be honest, I really like the music. So this is GM Patch and now come on music. Al Algernon music. Um, every music suits it, but uh, my favorite would be this opening in the menu music. It's really gentle, it's kind of sad, but it's really calming too. You can actually feel like it belongs to a scene where, one, where the two um, uh, confess to each other or something, talk about something horrible. So um, I guess if you were to consider uh, my favorite music in this game, would be the uh, middle screen. So that should be the end of our let's play of Eorzean Major and Alchemia Story. Thank you all for watching, and I'm looking forward to any new potential game that our um, creator, our Shibboleth, will make in the future. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!